Hi, I'm James Tobin, the author of The Man He Became. This is History in Five, and I'm going to tell you how polio shaped the life and the presidency of Franklin Roosevelt. FDR certainly wanted to be president from an early age. His model was Theodore Roosevelt, his distant cousin, who was president at the time that FDR was in college. He was very soon on a political fast track, certainly one of the rising stars of the Democratic Party. But then when he was just 38 years old, he was at a Boy Scout camp out and contracted the polio virus. And within days, he was paralyzed from the waist down. He couldn't even sit up, uh, let alone stand or walk. And everybody, his friends, his enemies, his family, Eleanor herself, everyone thought that his career in politics was finished. In that era, the stigma of disability was so strong that no one could imagine that a man who was paralyzed could possibly run for higher office, let alone think of the presidency. This kept him out of politics, but actually the timing was good because the Democratic Party was in the process of tearing itself apart in the middle 1920s. Urban Democrats on one side, rural Democrats in the South and the West on the other. FDR could stay on the sidelines. That was, that was a good thing for his career. The most important thing was that polio gave FDR a story to tell about himself. His biggest handicap in politics was being the Harvard kid born with a silver spoon in his mouth. But now he could portray himself as a guy who was overcoming very great trouble. One of FDR's political aides was a guy named Jim Farley, who had been boxing commissioner of the state of New York. And Farley said that supreme accolade in sports is he got up off the deck and went on to win. That was how FDR was able to portray himself now. You often hear people say nowadays that FDR concealed his physical condition. And this is simply not true. He was always at risk of falling, so he didn't want photographers to take his picture when he was walking. He also didn't want to be seen in a wheelchair in public. That was just too potent a symbol of disability. But during his comeback, he was completely frank about his condition. It was often discussed in the newspapers. And the emphasis was always on his courage. Eleanor really played no direct role in FDR's early political career. She started to get involved in politics just before he got sick. And then polio interrupted that. Really for a full year, she did nothing but nurse her husband. But then FDR became preoccupied with his recovery, he was often away, and she began to get into democratic politics on her own. She seems to have made a decision that she was going to live her own life from this point forward. She became a real leader in the party. Uh, now many people said, well, she's helping her husband, but she was an independent force, uh, especially getting women involved in party politics. FDR supported her, and he never tried to tell her what to do. So they were now on parallel tracks, helping each other, but separate. And that set the pattern for how they would be when he was elected president and she became first lady. But during his recovery, he tried all kinds of different exercises and therapies. When one thing didn't work, he would try something else. I think he finally realized that he would never get back the full use of his legs. But his physical therapists were able to show him that he could learn a new way of walking, holding the cane in one hand, holding onto somebody's arm with the other hand. He adjusted his goals. That made a huge difference. And that was the method of the New Deal. Before he took office in 1933, in the worst months of the Great Depression, FDR said, if one thing doesn't work, try another, but above all, try something. That was the president who led the country through the Great Depression and World War II, a leader who was going to keep at it no matter how bad things got. I think that's why people believed in him. That's why many people loved him.